Why is the SRS light on? This is something that I didn't notice when I bought the car, and it wasn't even documented by the mechanic. So either the mechanic missed it prior to me getting the car, or it's something that started after I took possession of the car. Either way, in this video, I'm going to look into turning off the SRS light and fixing the issue that caused it to turn on in the first place. So let's go. When I put the key in the ignition and turn it to the on position or start the car, the SRS light right there remains solid the entire time. So I'm gonna try without a scanner that can read codes. Uh, I'm gonna try to determine what the code is that's causing this light to remain on even with the engine running uh, using this method where I plug in some wires into the OBD2. So let's get started. Okay, so in the driver's side footwell towards the center console area is the OBD2 port connector right there. And what I've already done is I've jumped pins 4 to pin 9. So pin 4 starting on the bottom right corner counting over 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where that first lead is in. Counts to 8 on that corner. And then 9 through 16 is in the top, so pin 9 is where the other lead is right there. 9 is kind of like, a, it's, a, it's an OEM specific spot for Honda. That's kind of where, uh, I don't know, I guess like codes for certain things can be read. And number 4 in the bottom right there is chassis ground. Notice that it's wider on the plug on the bottom here. This is sort of inverted. Uh, other times it's the other way around, so just be mindful of how the plug is arranged. With that uh, where it is, we're going to turn the key to the on position. So the key is currently in the off position. We're going to turn the key to the on position. When we do, we're going to take a look for that SRS light. It's going to be on for six seconds, hopefully turn off for four seconds, and then begin flashing with about one second blinks, followed by half second blinks, and that'll establish what error code we're seeing. So let's Give it a try. Key into the ignition, to the on position. That's right, light went off. Okay, get ready to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, one, two, three. So that's code nine dash three. If you look that up online, code nine dash three is a faulty switch in the driver seatbelt buckle. Now the seatbelt buckle is fine. The problem is that it's not relaying the message to the SRS indicate that the driver is buckled and. That's a prerequisite in order to blow the airbags if the conditions are met because uh, the car doesn't want to release the airbags under any circumstances if the driver is not buckled. But if it doesn't know if the driver is buckled or not, then it won't deploy the airbags. So it's that contact that's sending the signal that's the problem. So apparently these seatbelt contacts is a common issue uh, for these types of vehicles 01 to 05 Civics. The seatbelt that I'm that's on the driver's side, it's not plugged in, and as you can see, the light's on right there. But if I plug it in, the light should turn off, which it does. And if I unplug the seatbelt, it should come back on again, as such. However, if it doesn't work one time, or however many times, I'm not sure, the SRS light will come on and stay on, even if the switch does continue to work. So I'm gonna try to plug and unplug this repeatedly, and maybe we'll try to get it to malfunction. Seems to be working well so far. Oh, there we go. So it stayed off, meaning the car thinks the seat belt is plugged in. But as we can see, I don't have the seat belt plugged. Yet it's still off. So I'm gonna plug the seat belt back in now. The light stays off, and now it's correct. Unplug it. And of course the light comes back on again, which is proper. So I guess one time that was an issue in the past, triggered the SRS light on, and now the SRS light is staying on. So we're now looking at the driver's seat belt. There's two bolts here. 
They're Torx uh, Security T10 two bolts. So you get your Torx thing out. They're not very tight at all. Just gotta loosen them. And then there's two components that make up the cap or the cover for the seat belt. So there's one. And you can see the end is a T10 and it's a security T10. Once that off this cover here, so it swings out from the bottom and then down. And one thing to note is this rubberized handle, the last one is clipped in at the bottom here and here. So make sure when we put it back, we have it in there like so. So this back end swings outward and then up. That's the cover, kind of dirty. And this is the front side like that. And this is the inside of the seat belt. So when you do latch your seat belt, it pushes down on this metal area here compressing this spring. And this arm here is what forces this little metal piece inward, pressing against that red seal. And there's a little nub that sticks out in the middle of it into this black area back here. And that's how your seat belt knows. So that's how your seatbelt is locked, and that's unlocking the seatbelt. So what we're going to do is spray some electrical contact cleaner behind this rubber seal. Some people cut off that rubber seal. I'm going to do my best to not damage it and spray some of this contact cleaner in there, wiggle it a bunch of times, spray more, wiggle it a bunch of times until my heart's content and then reassemble. So I just put a little towel behind so I don't get this cleaner everywhere. So click a bunch of times, spray more, click a bunch of times, spray more, click a bunch of times. We're basically trying to work this cleaner inside this uh, part in the back here, this black area where that rubber red seal buds up against. Also in the cover, right where this area is, was where we found a lot of dirt in here. So we cleaned that out as well. So to fit this back over, we fit this over the top. Now getting this cover piece on was a little bit challenging, but once I had it right, it went on like butter. I basically, what you have to do is instead of sliding it down, you basically hinge it this way, making sure you get this top piece on first and then cover the back end and swing it down and it fits right underneath on both sides sits nice and level with the buckle and then we install this uh, piece in the reverse order that we took it out which is to slide it upward and then swing it in and then we have our two torx bits that we're going to be extra careful not to cross thread or drop And we just install them like so. So now we need to reset the SRS system. And the way we do that is we go under the driver foot well. And if we look up directly beneath the steering columns, so there's the steering wheel. There's this cover right here, hooks around just like this on both sides. And there's two uh, clips, rotate them counterclockwise. And then this swings down and then down, or it swings towards you and then down. And beneath that, you have a fuse panel sort of towards the center of the vehicle. And see that red plug there? It looks like it's plugged into something, but really it's just a dummy plug. It just sits there so it doesn't dangle, but it's not actually plugged into anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to fish that piece out. 
next. So I delicately pulled it straight out. Uh, the end of it has two pins in it right there. And again, if we go over to this side, you can see right there, in that area right there, that's where it sits. There's no plugs in there, it just sits in there. Um, so now, we're going to take a jumper lead, looking something like this, and we're going to feed it into the two ends of this. So as you can see, I put the two ends of this metal cable one into each prong in this little area here. And what we're going to do is the uh, currently the key is out of the ignition. We're going to put the key in. We're going to turn it to the on position without turning the car actually on or turn the engine over. With the car in the on position, the SRS light will turn on for six seconds, then turn off. Once it turns off, we're going to unhook this cable from these leads. When the SRS light then turns back on, we plug it back in to both ends of, uh, of this little module here, this cable, and when the light turns off, we remove it one last time, then the SRS light will flash twice to let us know it's been reset. So let's get started with that. So we're gonna turn the car on. The light should turn on for five seconds. Then when it turns off, we unplug. When it turns back on, we plug it back in. When it turns off, we unplug it. Now it flashes twice to let us know it's been reset. And we're done. So now if we turn the car off, pull the key out, insert, turn it to the on position. The SRS light will turn on for six seconds doing its system check, and hopefully it'll turn off. There we go. Furthermore, we plug in our seat belt, and the light turns off, we unplug it, the light turns back on. Also, don't forget when you're done to make sure you unplug all of your jumper cables or uh, paper clips that you've used. Uh, and we can store this back so it doesn't just dangle and hang loose, although it's not 100% necessary. We're going to put it back right in there. So just like so. And now we're going to just delicately push it in place. Last thing. We're going to install the cover back under the steering wheel. So on the side here, both sides, that hooks in. This swings up into place. And then we rotate these clips back 90 degrees clockwise. So to fix the SRS issue, I spent $8 on contact cleaner and I had to buy Torx security bits because I had Torx bits, but I didn't have the security bits. Grand total was $18. I also spent a couple of dollars on a Haynes guide to help me understand some issues that I have and will continue to have uh, on this project car in a brush. So I just wanted to add that in here. Anyway, my running total on this project car is now $609. And that's how you fix the SRS on light when the code is 93 driver seatbelt.